Welcome to week nine of the NAI Weekly Football Update. I'm your host, Alan Grossbach, alongside Chad Waller, coming to you from the NAI headquarters in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. Now, one thing about NAI football is the great parody. The underdog always has a shot at winning, and those games become infinitely more important down the stretch. You're right, Chad. On the flip side, kind of unique to this season, we still have three unbeaten programs left in NAI football, and a few of those we'll talk about here during the show. In last week's NAI Football Game of the Week, which at the time featured two unbeaten schools, number eight Reinhardt powered past top ranked Lindsey Wilson 42 24, again in a battle of unbeaten teams. Eagle running back Nigel Curtis had a career day with a program record five touchdowns, and he ran for a career high 129 yards. Over overall, Reinhardt racked up 327 yards on the ground. The Eagles never trailed as they scored on their opening drive when Curtis plowed for a one-yard touchdown run. The score would quickly become 14-0 as Tyler Bradley caught a screen pass from quarterback Ryan Thompson and raced down the sideline for a 46-yard touchdown strike. Bradley would end the game with five catches for 126 yards. Reinhardt kept the momentum going for the rest of the game en route to the 18-point win. Now, Lindsey Wilson quarterback Dylan Beasley was a primary offense for the Blue Raiders. He completed nearly 67% of his throws for 375 and two scores. However, he was also intercepted twice. The win puts the Eagles at 8-0 on the year and keeps them tied with Campbellsville atop the Mid-South Conference West standings. Lindsey Wilson falls to 6-1 on the year and 1-1 in the league. And it doesn't get any easier for the Blue Raiders as they host number 20 Campbellsville on Saturday. For the first time in four weeks, we have a new number one in the NAI Football Coaches Top 25 poll. The Raiders of Southern Oregon claim the top spot for the fourth time in school history and the second time this season. Southern Oregon, our defending national champion, for those who may have forgotten, has won six straight since losing its season opener to then number four Carroll. The Raiders play Rocky Mountain on Saturday in a key Frontier Conference showdown. Number two Morningside and number five Doan also claimed first, pe first place votes this week, so it was by no means a unanimous selection. And for those that are watching the NAI schedule, Doan and Morningside play on the final regular season um, weekend of NAI football. Nine of the ten teams in the middle of the pack of the top 25 moved to at least one position. Number 21 Cumberland's highlights the positive movement within the poll with a three-spot jump. However, if the season ended today, the Patriots would be on the outside looking at the playoffs since they are not inside the top 20. A couple of newcomers also joined the top 25 this week in number 22 Point out of Georgia and number 25 Segu out of Texas. Both clubs are ranked for the first time. One of the most notable aspects of this edition was the exclusion of Carroll out of Montana. The Saints were 3-4 and four in the year. They had been previously ranked for 187 straight editions, the longest active streak at the time. Carroll last went unranked on October 31st of 2000. We started a look back at last week with one of the oldest rivalries in NAI football, and that's number 12 Montana Tech, and at the time, number 18 Carroll. The Ore Diggers cruised to a 42-7 win at Nelson Stadium in Helena, Montana. The victory marks the first time Montana Tech has defeated Carroll in Nelson Stadium since 2001, and it's the first time defeating the Saints twice in a season since 1999. Montana Tech running back Nolan Saracini was the story of the game. The junior from Billings, Montana raced for 273 yards and scored four touchdowns, including ones on runs of 80 yards and 99 yards. He counted for the fifth touchdown through the air, so he passed for a touchdown too. He did it all on Saturday. His 99-yard touchdown run broke a school record that was set in 1973 by an individual named Buddy Walsh. Walsh's original run was a record of 89 yards. Saracini earned National Offensive Player of the Week honors for his effort in that game. Overall, the Ordiggers outgained Carroll 350 yards to only 190 total yards in the dominant win. A big second half really propelled St. Francis out of Indiana to a 38-29 win against number nine Robert Morris in a key Mid-States Football Association showdown. The Cougars outscored Robert Morris 31-15 in the second half to improve to 8-0 on the year. Quarterback Nick Ferrer led the way with more than 230 yards passing, passing and two touchdowns. Wide receiver Seth Coate led the way with five catches for 142 and a touchdown. Coates' touchdown was a 41-yard strike in the first quarter to open the scoring. Tailback Justin Green also had a strong game for St. Francis. He tallied 140 yards on 19 carries and a touchdown. On two no turnovers, they re really proved key in the ball game as St. Francis defense intercepted Robert Morris quarterback Byron Dawkins three times. 
Two of the three picks led to touchdowns, including an eight-yard pick six by Nashawn Lewis late in the fourth quarter. The Cougars now own a one-and-a-half game lead over Marion in the MSFA Mid-East League. Our final game was a thriller out of the Great Plains Athletic Conference as number six Doan down number 23 Concordia out of Nebraska, 23-20 in overtime. Jordan Pe Peterson was the hero for, for Doan as he hit a game-winning 40-yard field goal in that overtime period. The game was tied early in the fourth quarter when Concordia wide receiver caught a 67-yard touchdown pass to cap a four-play 88-yard drive, and that's how we got to the extra frame. Overall, Tiger running back Nate Meyer had another strong day with 151 yards on 34 carries. However, he was held without a touchdown. Quarterback Brandon Stewart also had a good day with 210 yards passing and two touchdowns. The win moves Doan to 7-0 on the season and 6-0 in the G-Pack while extending its regular season winning streak to 11 games dating back to last season. The Tigers have also won 10 straight against the Bulldogs who fall to 5-2. A couple other notable scores over the weekend were number 2 Southern Oregon defeating College of Idaho 63-21, number 3 Morningside defeating Briarcliff 79-7, and number 21 Dakota Wesleyan defeating number 15 Northwestern 27-17. For the second straight week, the Mid-South Conference will be featured in the NAIA Game of the Week as number 20 Campbellsville travels to number 8 Lindsey Wilson, and that was selected using our social media fan vote. Actually, the second straight week, Lindsey Wilson is in our Game of the Week. The Tigers, like we said earlier, are currently tied atop the Mid-South Conference West Division with Reinhardt at 3-0. The Blue Raiders, who we mentioned lost to Reinhardt earlier in the show, are a, half, a game and a half back at 1-1 one one in the conference. Saturday marks the fifth meeting all-time between the two clubs. Campbellsville holds a slight 3-2 advantage in the all-time series. However, the Blue Raiders have won two straight. Like we mentioned in last week's show, Lindsey Wilson is led on offense by quarterback Dylan Beasley. The first-year starter eclipsed seven, the 1,700-yard passing mark this season with a season-best 370 yards passing last weekend. Beasley has thrown for 14 touchdown passes but has been intercepted seven times, four of which have come in the last two weeks. Wide receiver Jay Godlock is Beasley's top target with 21 catches for 343 yards receiving. Tailback Josh Haney is the primary runner for the Blue Raiders with 325 yards on 56 attempts in seven games. One guy to watch for on the Lindsey Wilson side this week is return specialist Alan Cooks. He leads the NAI in punt return yards and has three returns for touchdowns. This includes a 92-yard score in the Blue Raiders season opener at Lyon. Looking at Campbellsville, they've won six straight since opening the year with a back-to-back -back losses. Similar to Lindsey Wilson, the Tigers are led by a high-powered passing attack that leads the NEI in total pass offense and passing offense per game. Quarterback Jacob Russell is the guy for Campbellsville. He is completing better than 60% of his throws for more than 2,700 yards in eight games. Russell owns 29 touchdown passes on the year while only being intercepted six times in more than 300 attempts. He is currently on a streak of more than 70 straight passes without an interception. Wide receiver Jared Harrington is his top target with 53 catches, 745 receiving yards, and five touchdowns. Battery mate Ty Tyus Alcorn leads the team in receiving touchdowns with 16. He's second on the club in catches and receiving yards. Defensively, Campbellsville is number seven in the NAI in pass defense per game, allowing a little more than 145 yards per contest. Both secondaries will surely be under fire on Saturday. This is a must win for both teams. Lindsey Wilson can't afford to fall another game back in the, can't, in the conference title race, while Campbellsville controls its destiny as the Tigers host Reinhardt next week. Just like every week, we picked this game using a social media fan vote. Graphics will be posted on Facebook and Instagram no later than 6 p.m. Central Time on Monday evening, and that poll remains open until 10 a.m. Central Time on Tuesday. Lastly, I'd like to remind everyone about our Periscope Q&A session. Please submit questions to me through our NAI underscore news Twitter account or do it live during the broadcast. Well, that puts a wrap on this week's episode. I'm Alan Grossbach. And I'm Chad Waller. We'll see you next week.